is the multiverse more than just science fiction? Well, guess what? The concept of a multiverse isn't just the stuff of blockbuster movies and best-selling novels anymore. Yep, you heard that right. Some scientific theories now suggest that other universes, just like ours, could lurk beyond our understanding. But, as you regular viewers will know, the cosmos isn't all smooth sailing. The multiverse theory is still one of the most fiercely debated topics in the scientific community. So, where does the boundary of our universe end, and could there really be a multiverse? Or is this all just philosophical mumbo-jumbo? Well, let's take a closer look, but before we do, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking content. Let's rewind to the beginning. Not just the start, but the very, very start. Imagine everything that exists or ever existed all in one spot. This tiny dot is what we call the singularity. And then, boom, the Big Bang happened. The singularity expanded rapidly. Well, stop here for a moment and think about the cosmic timeline. We're at 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds in the Planck Epoch. Here's the catch though, we have no clue about what happened before this moment. The singularity is the greatest mystery of the cosmos. All of our theories and formulas just failed to explain it. Stephen Hawking once mentioned that our observations confirm the universe sprang into being at a specific moment. But the moment of creation, the singularity, doesn't follow any known physical laws. This singularity is a puzzling paradox. Theoretically, it should have infinite density and temperature, but that's practically impossible. Here's why. If there's infinite density, entropy approaches zero, and that's not in line with infinite temperature. Now, let's return to the Planck Epoch, which is named for our universe's shortest measurable time span. During this epoch, the primary forces of physics were all unified, but due to extreme conditions, this unity broke down. This split, called matter asymmetry or baryon asymmetry, set the stage for everything we know today, including constants and particles. Weirdly enough, these events contradict our understanding of physics. For instance, we expected the Big Bang to create equal amounts of matter and antimatter, but we don't see antimatter anywhere. Instead, matter has become the dominant substance in the universe. After this, we entered the second Grand Unification Epoch stage, where gravity becomes a separate force and the universe becomes less homogeneous. This epoch was more of a blink-and-miss event. Why, you ask? Because it came to a close almost as swiftly as it started, just around 10 to the power of minus 36 seconds after the universe's birth. Then, the universe started blowing up rapidly. Imagine a subatomic particle inflating to the size of an orange, and then quickly to the size of a galaxy. This exponential growth made some points in the universe move faster than light. And here's why things get a bit tricky. You see, it might look like some points in our universe are moving faster than light. Even though they seem to be breaking the universe's speed limit, they're not. Instead, new space is being created between them. Did you get that? It's not that they're moving fast, it's that the space between them is growing. Let's skip over a few more epochs of the universe's creation and dive back into the main topic. Picture our universe. It's vast, it's familiar, and it's relatively chilly. But it's also a place with no stars or planets. Yet. What shape is this universe? To answer that, you need to wrap your head around the density of our universe. The shape of our universe depends on the density parameter omega. If omega is more than 1, our universe is curved like a ball. If it is 1, our universe is flat as a pancake. And if it's less than 1, our universe looks like a saddle. Why does this matter? Because this is what can tell us how our universe will end, whether it keeps expanding forever or collapses on itself. And here's the cool part. How do we measure the density? We look at the cosmic microwave background, that's CMB, which is radiation visible in all directions, a leftover from the high temperatures of the early universe. These tiny temperature fluctuations across the universe, visible in the CMB, help us determine the value of constants like the density parameter, 
And guess what? It turns out our universe is flat. Despite ongoing debates, just humor me and let's accept this truth for now. So this brings us to the multiverse. How do quantum mechanics tie in? Well, every electronic device you use is based upon quantum equations, and those equations could have multiple answers. But in reality, we only observe one. Until then, all solutions are possible, a phenomenon scientists call quantum superposition. In 1926, Erwin Schrödinger defined every quantum state an elementary particle could be in. However, the problem was that the equation had no concrete solution. This gave birth to the famous Schrödinger's cat thought experiment, where a cat could simultaneously be dead and alive depending on the particle's quantum state. Cosmologist Max Tegmark took this concept even further, suggesting that different experiment outcomes could manifest in different universes. So, how many alternate universes could there be? Theoretically, it's an infinite number, and in each one, an observer is recording a different result of an experiment. Tegmark even split the multiverse concept into four levels, adding another layer to this mind-boggling concept. First stop, the level one multiverse. Picture a vast, infinite space-time where universes identical to ours are spreading apart due to the Big Bang's expansion. Think of it as a cosmic race, but the finish line keeps moving further away. We might even have doppelgangers in these universes. However, they're moving away so fast that it's impossible to verify. These universes are like our distant, unreachable cosmic cousins. Next up is the Level 2 Multiverse. This level is like a cosmic lottery, with an infinite number of tickets. Each universe has different starting conditions, constants, and particles, making them very, very diverse. Envision a world where stars never shine, or atoms disintegrate as soon as they form. Intriguing, isn't it? The level 3 multiverse brings us to the concept of parallel universes, where every quantum possibility is realized in another universe where the universes from the first and second levels could exist. Here, every possible outcome of the past and the future can happen. Tegmark suggests that this multiverse level is the ultimate superposition. It houses every theory, concept, fantasy, type of substance, constants, laws of physics, you name it, it's here. And wait, we're not finished yet. Before going into the fourth level, let's delve into a bit of theory. Just suppose something binds these realities together amidst the infinite variety of universes at all levels, with their differences in elementary particles, laws of nature, and quantum states. Something that persists across one universe and onto the next. We'll let you ponder for just a moment. Can you guess what it is? Yes, you're right, it's mathematics. Each universe variation can be described mathematically and Tegmark has an interesting explanation. Consider an apple, for instance. You might describe it as round, red, and firm. But these properties vanish if we zoom into a molecular or quantum level. An atom isn't round, red, or hard. Atoms don't have color, and the idea of temperature doesn't apply to a lone atom. So what characteristics does an atom hold, then? For instance, a quark has spin and impulse, which are essentially abstract mathematical concepts. If string theory holds any truth, elementary particles are mere vibrations of strings, which don't even possess mass. Mass is born through the vibration of the string in Higgs fields. The string itself is not a physical entity. It's purely mathematical, a number. Consequently, Tegmark's radical yet fundamental conclusion is that at the most fundamental level, physics doesn't exist. Only mathematics does. Everything around us in its purest form is a collection of abstract mathematical concepts. It isn't that math describes nature. Math is nature. This mathematical nature of the universe sparked us to the level 4 multiverse, the ultimate reality. Here, Realities with different mathematical structures exist. It's like a completely different reality that doesn't even abide by the same mathematical principles as ours. However, this is all based on Tegmark's theory, which, although fascinating, is highly debatable and far from being universally accepted. Despite the controversy, Tegmark's theory has stirred the scientific community, sparking heated debates and philosophical discussions. Whether Tegmark is ultimately proven correct or not, 
His theory has forever altered our understanding of the universes and our place within them. It serves as a reminder that even our most fundamental concepts and theories are constantly evolving, and the possibilities of the universes are truly endless. So who knows? Maybe there's another version of you out there in a parallel universe watching this video. And if that's the case, we hope you both enjoyed it. Until then, keep asking questions and exploring the ever-expanding boundaries of our universe. Because, in the words of Tegmark himself, why settle for one reality when we can have them all? So, what do you think? Let's continue the discussion in the comment section below. And as usual, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more mind-boggling content. See you in the next video.